Hello, good evening, welcome to St Mary's Halesworth. It's six o'clock on Wednesday, the 30th of August. I'm reading Common Worship Daily Prayer from the Church of England. Uh, and uh, remembering the Lesser Festival, John Bunyan. If you are following in the book, you'll find the words in the morning and evening prayer during ordinary time section, evening prayer on Wednesday, after the morning and evening prayer during the day sections, right at the beginning. Online at Arima's Daily Prayer and the Church of England's website, downloadable as apps or Apple or Android device. If you are following in the book, you might like to look up the 30th of August, halfway through amongst the Saints' Days and Festivals, to pick up on the um, collect, the canticle, and the refrain before and after the Song of Mary, the Magnificat. You're welcome to join me in the building, or by Zoom. The codes are on the Blythe Church's website and Facebook page. We're live streaming on Facebook. Stay this video for you to watch at your leisure. The audio I'm recording and at will appear on my Dominic Doble YouTube channel presently. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. A song of God's descending. I love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my crag, my fortress, and my deliverer. In my distress I called upon the Lord, and cried out to my God for help. He heard my voice in his temple, and my cry came to his ears. <coughs> he parted the heavens and came down, and thick darkness was under his feet. He rode upon the cherubim and flew, he came flying on the wings of the wind. He made darkness his covering round about him, dark waters and thick clouds his pavilion. From the brightness of his presence through the clouds burst hailstones <coughs> and coals of fire. The Lord also thundered out of heaven. The Most High uttered his voice with hailstones and coals of fire. For you will save a lowly people and bring down the high looks of the proud. You also shall light my candle. The Lord my God shall make my darkness to be bright. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried in the fire. He is a shield to all who trust in him. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. The appointed psalm reading this evening of verses 129 to 152 is Psalm 119. You'll find the psalms at the back of the book. If you're looking for Psalm 119, we can scroll onto it if we're following electronically. Psalm 119 in the Psalter at the back of the book. And once you have found 119, we're looking for verses 129 to 152. The opening of your word gives light. Your testimonies are wonderful, therefore my soul keeps them. The opening of your word gives light, and it gives understanding to the simple. I open my mouth and draw in my breath, as I long for your commandments. Turn to me to be gracious to me, <clears throat> as is your way with those who love your name. Order my steps by your word. And let no wickedness have dominion over me. Redeem me from earthly oppressors, so that I may keep your commandments. Show the light of your countenance upon your servant, and teach me your statute. My eyes run down with streams of water, because the wicked do not keep your law. Righteous are you, O Lord, and true are your judgments. You have ordered your decrees in righteousness, and in great faithfulness. My indignation destroys me, because my adversaries forget your word. Your word has been tried to the uttermost and so your servant loves it. I am small and of no reputation, yet do I not forget your commandments. <clears throat> your righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and your law is the truth. Trouble and heaviness have taken hold upon me, yet my delight is in your commandments. The righteousness of your testimonies is everlasting. O grant me understanding, and I shall live. 
I call with my whole heart. Answer me, O Lord, that I may keep your statutes. To you I call, O save me, and I shall keep your testimonies. Early in the morning I cry to you, for in your word is my trust. My eyes are open before the night watches, that I may meditate on your word. Hear my voice, O Lord, according to your faithful love. According to your judgment, give me life. They draw near that in malice persecute me, who are far from your law. You, O Lord, are near at hand, and all your commandments are true. <coughs> Long have I known of your testimonies, that you have founded them for ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The opening of your word gives light. Scrolling past our first reading to the Song of the Blessed. Um, I'm actually thinking that this is the standard Wednesday afternoon canticle, so uh, maybe we don't need to look up 30th of August for uh, today's option, Remembering Bunyan. Rejoice and be glad, for you are the light of the world, and great is your reward in heaven. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Blessed are those who suffer persecution for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Rejoice and be glad, for you are the light of the world, and great is your reward in heaven. This is from Kindle Edition of Celebrating a Saint's Reading from the Pilgrim's Progress by John Bunyan. And then it came to pass a while after that there was a post in the town that inquired for Mr. Honest. So he came to his house where he was, and to deliver to his hand these lines, Thou art commanded to be ready against this day seven nights to present thyself before thy Lord at his father's house. And for a token that my message is true, all thy daughters of music shall be brought low. Then Mr. Honest called for his friends, and said unto them, I die, but shall make no will. As for my honesty, it shall go with me. Let him that comes after be told of this. When the day that he was to be gone was come, he addressed himself to go over the river. Now the river at that time overflowed the banks in some places. But Mr. Honest in his lifetime had spoken to one good conscience to meet him there, the which he also did, and lent him his hand, and so helped him over. The last words of Mr. Honest were, Grace reigns, so he left the world. After this it was noised abroad that Mr. Valiant for Truth was taken with a summon by the same post as the other, and had this for a token that the summons was true, that his pitcher was broken at the fountain. When he understood it, he called for his friends and told them of it. Then said he, I am going to my father's, and through, though with great difficulty I am got hither, yet now I do not repent me of all the trouble I have been at to arrive where I am. My sword I give to him that shall succeed me in my pilgrimage, and my courage and skill to him that can get it. My marks and scars I carry with me to be a witness for me that I have fought his battles, who now will be my rewarder. When the day that he must go thence was come, go hence was come, and many accompanied him to the riverside, into which, as he went, he said, Death, where is thy sting? And as he went down deeper, said, Grave, where is thy victory? So he passed over, and all the trumpets sounded for him on the other side. So to our first Bible reading, Second Samuel 15, from 1 to 12. Second Samuel is about uh, eight or so books in to the Hebrew Scriptures, so if you've got a Bible with both covenants in it, turn to the beginning and move your way through. first five books are the law, then we're in the history section, we're looking for the second book of Samuel, so that's number two in the title of the book. Uh, whilst Once we've found Second Samuel, we're looking for the large number 15 at the head of the paragraph, chapter number 15, and uh, once we've found that, verses 1 to 12 within the text, the small numbers 1 to 12. Second Samuel 15, beginning at verse 1. Scroll back a little if you're following electronically. Absalom got himself a chariot and horses and 50 men to run ahead of him. Absalom used to rise early and stand beside the road into the gate. And when anyone brought a suit before the king for judgment, Absalom would call out and say, From what city are you? And when the person said, Your servant is of such and such a tribe in Israel, Absalom would say, See, your claims are good and right, but there is no one deputed by the king to hear you. 
Absalom said, moreover, if only I would judge in the land, then all who had a suit or cause might come to me, and I would give them justice. Whenever people came near to do obeisance to him, he would put out his hand and take hold of them and kiss them. Thus Absalom did to every Israelite who came to the king for judgment. So Absalom stole the hearts of the people of Israel. At the end of four years, Absalom said to the king, Please let me go to Hebron and pay the vow that I have made to the Lord, for your servant made a vow while I lived at Gesha in Aram. If the Lord will indeed bring me back to Jerusalem, then I will worship the Lord in Hebron. The king said to him, Go in peace. So he got up and went to Hebron. But Absalom sent secret messengers throughout all the tribes of Israel, saying, As soon as you hear the sound of the trumpet, then shout, Absalom has become king at Hebron. Two hundred men from Jerusalem went with Absalom. They were invited guests, and they went in their innocence, knowing nothing of the matter. While Absalom was offering the sacrifices, he sent for Ahithophel, the Gilonite, David's counsellor from his city, Gilo. The conspiracy grew in strength, and the people with Absalom kept increasing. <coughs> So this seems to me to be a history. It doesn't seem to me to have any particular metaphorical or um, allegorical um, content. Uh, it just seems to me to be a warning to be aware and careful. We were told yesterday or the day before that um, David was going to find things difficult now in his family because uh, he had taken Bathsheba, raped her, had her husband killed, and the first son of the partnership died, second son becomes Solomon, but as part of that his judgment was that he would have sort of infighting within his family, which I guess would have happened anyway, but it was uh, apparently a judgment on that because of that act. And uh, here we have Absalom, his son, um, I think I'm right at saying he's his son, sitting in the city gate, and when people went to the king for a judgment, so it's a bit like going to the crown court today, um, but we go then they would just go to the king to ask for a decision. Think of people going to Solomon, the prostitutes or the women going to Solomon, where um, both had children. One died and took the other one's child, and then Solomon said, uh, cut the child in half. And the true mother had mercy on the child's life and was prepared to give the child to the other mother. And uh, so that's how Solomon decided. So that's kind of people going to David for him to decide on matters that they couldn't work out locally. And Absalom said, I'm afraid the king hasn't got time to see you today, but if you came to me, it would be well. And he sat there for four years, welcoming, greeting, saying hello to people. And uh, then he goes off to uh, Hebron, and lets everybody know he's going to be going there. And he says, when you hear the trumpet blast, tell everybody that Absalom is king. And various people who are associated with David go to be with him. And so as we read, the conspiracy grows in strength. <clears throat> David doesn't seem to have, any, to have any knowledge of it, doesn't seem to be making any, diff many, making any attempts to intervene. We're not told that in the story, but it just seems a bit odd, seems a bit complacent. However, that's the story as we have it. Acts 9 then, our second Bible reading from 19 to 31. So Acts is uh, in the Greek scriptures, the second covenant. If you're following the Bible with both covenants in it, turn to two thirds of the way through and move towards the back. The Gospels begin the second covenant, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, after which you will find Acts. <clears throat> within the book of Acts, we're looking for the large number nine at the head of the paragraph, chapter nine. And within chapter nine, we're starting at verse 19. They're the small numbers in the text. We're starting at verse 19. And going on to 31. <clears throat> For several days, Saul was with the disciples in Damascus, and immediately he began to proclaim Jesus in the synagogues, saying, He is the Son of God. All who heard him were amazed and said, Is not this the man who made havoc in Jerusalem among those who invoked his name? Has he not come here for the purpose of bringing them bound before the chief priests? Saul became increasingly more powerful and confounded the Jews who lived in Damascus by proving that Jesus was the Messiah. After some time had passed, the Jews plotted to kill him, but their plot became known to Saul. They were watching gate day and night so that they might kill him, but his disciples took him by night and let him down through an opening in the wall, lowering him in a basket. When he had come to Jerusalem, he attempted to join the disciples, and they were all afraid of him, for they did not believe that he was a disciple. But Barnabas took him, brought him to the apostles, and described for them how on the road he had seen the Lord, who had spoken to him, and how in Damascus he had spoken boldly in the name of Jesus. So he went in and out among them in Jerusalem, speaking boldly in the name of the Lord. He spoke and argued with the Hellenists, but they were attempting to kill him. When the believers learned, learned of it, they brought him down to Caesarea and sent him off to Tarsus. Meanwhile, the church throughout Judea, Galilee and Samaria had peace and was built up. Living in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, it increased in numbers. 
So Saul goes to talk. He's with the disciples in Damascus. He proclaims Jesus in the synagogues, we are told, in the first instance. And people were amazed because they thought that he was, had gone there to um, harry people saying what he was now saying. After some time passed, we don't know how long, the opening paragraph says for several days, Saul was with the disciples, but after some time passed, the Jews plot to kill him. Watching day and night, so there's another few days at least, but the disciples lower him down through an opening the wall in a basket, and then he goes to Jerusalem. He tries to join the disciples, but they're afraid. Barnabas takes him and lets them know that he's all right, so he has a, he's introduced, he's got a reference, and then he becomes part of the disciples, speaking boldly. Here, he talks not so much to the Jews, but to the Hellenists, who again are attempting to kill him. <clears throat> so the disciples, the believers, send him off to Caesarea, and uh, or to Sarsus, via Caesarea. And at this time, it's almost as if with Saul's conversion, the um, wind goes out of sails of the persecuting um, communities. Judea, Galilee and Samaria offer a peaceful home, welcome to those who believe. And uh, the church increases in numbers. I love the expression, fear of the Lord and comfort of the Spirit. So recognising, respecting the um, anointed one and the authority of the same, but being strengthened by the presence of the Spirit. May we know the same today. May we be prepared to welcome those who others might think are antagonistic on the reference of others. May we be prepared to support them as they speak, both with those from within the church and those from without. May we also be prepared to deal sensibly with persecution, avoiding it, not courting it where possible. To the responsory back in evening prayer, ordinary time. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. For I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand and afterwards receive me with glory. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. To the song of Mary. Again, I'm uncertain as to whether the refrain here is the standard Thursday evening one, which it may well be or whether it's common of teachers or similar. So if you are following in the book, and uh, those who doesn't sound right for you as a lead into my soul claims, then uh, do look up 30th of August, uh, John Bunyan and direction there to the refrain for the Song of Mary. Otherwise, join in it, my soul. Those who keep and teach the commandments will be considered great in heaven. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him, from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones, and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel, to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Those who keep and teach the commandments will be considered great in heaven. <clears throat> Source, Son, Essence, three in one, one in three. We thank you for bringing us through this day. And uh, we look back at all those moments where you have blessed and encouraged and inspired us with experiences of hope, of peace, of creativity, of friendliness, of uh, progress at work or at home, use of skills and talents that you have given us. We thank you for that. And we look back over the day and it might have been our experience that we've struggled with addiction or exclusion. People might have been unkind to us physically, verbally, at work or at home. We might have struggled with our responsibilities to our parents or our children, even for our own welfare and uh, self-care. We might have had bad news about health or income or some other circumstance. And so that has been our lot. We come to you at the end of the day praying for your healing and your presence and your provision. 
your support. From Release International, we praise God that through Islamic, though Islamic State militants destroyed every Bible they could find in Iraq, it is believed that far more Bibles have been distributed since, thanks to Release International and others. From Christian Aid, we pray for Christian Aid's corporate partners and their ongoing support of their work. The Joint Public Issues Team Prayer for Ukraine includes the lines, We mourn every casualty of conflict, every precious life extinguished by war. We extend our amen to that petition and uh, expression to all those places where people are brutalised by military might. We pray for our bishops, Martin and Mike, our Archdeacon Rich, Rural Dean Josh, as we turn to Stanton, praying for the lead clergy person there, Cathy, and their children and families, Minister Hilary. We pray for their other um, ministers, elders, readers, house duty ministry to officiate, licensed, commissioned, etc. And uh, pray for their treasurers, wardens, secretaries, for their P other PCC members, electoral role, congregation, and communities, that they may all be blessed and inspired by the idea of uh, your calling to stand up, standing against conspiracy and untruth, undermining of the authority of those who put in charge, and at the same time the holding to account of those who are in charge, encouraging people to speak um, with those who would listen be they inside or outside, and to be sensible about dealing with those who are antagonistic. We ask your blessing on the judicial system and police in Suffolk, having heard of uh, Absalom trying to distract and redirect people from the King's justice. We thank you for all who are involved in that work. May it be seen to be to do with restoration and uh, enabling a community and not punitive punishment and exclusion. We pray there will be adequate investment um, across the peace to that end. Thank you for organisations like Oasis, as they inspire people to consider um, criminality as a product of exclusion. We pray for Christians in northwest Nigeria who are being killed and whose churches are being burned. We pray for peace and understanding between the Muslim Fulani and the Christian farmers. We pray for the establishment of rule of law in that place from the authorities, that those of all faiths and none may live together in harmony. We pray for reconciliation and conversations between the ethnicities and uh, the religions in that place. <clears throat> Please raise up people who are bridge builders. Within our villages, we uh, pray for the people and businesses associated with Beckles Road, South Royal Road, The Street, Halton Road, Bungie Lane, Blyford Lane, Sparrowhawk Road in Halton, and in Wenniston, Blackheath Road, Blythe Close, Back Lane, Oak Meadow Close, Church Lane, Colesview, Back Road, Coles Hill, Colescroft, Blyford Lane, Hammonds Walk. In Bramfield, Church Farm Road, Bridge Street, The Hill, Pittmans Grove, Edwards Lane, Low Road, Houseworth Road, Walpole Road, Thorrington Road, and Wenniston Road. South Old Road, Blyford Lane, Kings Lane in Blyford, in Thorrington Priory Lane, The Street, Fox Lane, Low Road, Fairfield, The Wash, Brussels Green, Russellton Road, Willow March Lane and Devils Lane. Pray for the businesses based in or serving those addresses, that they will thrive and prosper. Continue to be able to provide good jobs and services to the local economy. Pray for those people of faith in those addresses, they will be salt and light, being compelling, healing and valued. And for those for whom life is difficult at the moment, we pray that they will have the humility to accept help offered and uh, enough support to be sufficient advocates for themselves to get the um, solution that they require. <clears throat> we ask your blessing on Moira, Felicity and Peter, Ron, Paul and Cynthia, Janet, Francis, Jean, Valerie, Joan, Lynn, Carol, Graham, Richard, Anna, Margaret, Sheila, Adrian, Junie, John, and all others for whom life is a challenge at the moment. We pray that you'll act in sovereign grace, and that if that isn't to be the case, where faith is significant and a knowledge of you is encouraging, we pray that you'll make your presence known, felt in them, to them, in their circumstance. We pray for volunteers and professionals, neighbours, family, friends who walk with these on their journey. 
that they would be able to receive and uh, send outward and not back towards all expressions of hurt and pain, rather that they would be able to say the right thing, do the right thing at the right time, in the right way, to be proper supports and comforters, agents. And we thank you for all that's good in the lives of John and Eileen, Eric, priest, Sylvia and Raymond, Evelyn, Kenneth, Pat and all others who have recently died, including those who have died suddenly and unprepared through sickness, violence, neglect, accident, and those that have taken their own lives. Pray for those we have known and loved and see no longer, those who have served you faithfully here. And as we remember John Bunyan, all whose years mind falls at this time, may he pray for us that we may express our understanding and experience of faith in a creative and compelling way that is helpful to those who, amongst whom we live and who will follow after. We ask that according to your promise to humanity, you grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. We pray for ourselves and all who mourn, the loss of a loved one or a change in life chances, that we will hear your inspired words spoken through your incarnate mouth by the breath of your spirit, and that will bring light in our darkness, calm in our disorder and fruitfulness in our otherwise troubled lives. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. God of peace, who called your servant John Bunyan to be valiant for truth, grant that as strangers and pilgrims we may at the last rejoice with all Christian people in your heavenly city. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all, evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Goodbye to those joining us. Oh.